Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is John Coffey and I am the Unpaved Explorer. Today is January 9th, 2020. And what, are, what am I doing today? Today I am roasting two Cornish hens in the Dutch oven. And so with the Cornish hens, I have celery, carrots, onions, garlic, corn on a cob, and they're stuffed uh, with stuffing. So I'm going to go ahead and start preparing the dish. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get the stuffing ready. And I'll be using the stuffing. I'll be stuffing the Cornish hens. And I just use some box stuffing. So you just turn on your stove top. Now you're going to need some butter and margarine. I don't know. Good heaping spoonful. Then you need one and a half cups of water. Let that come to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, you stir in your stuffing mix. And you mix, then just let uh, turn it off and you cover it and uh, it'll be done in about five minutes and so when you stuff your bird uh, make sure you, you put uh, let the stuffing cool down uh, before you stuff your bird so it won't take long for the water to boil just a few minutes Alright, the water's boiling, the butter melted. Open up your package very carefully. Dump it all in. Give it a good mixing. There's your stuffing. So now, all you do is let your stuffing cool, keep it covered. Now you can start eating this for about five minutes, uh, but we'll just let it sit and cool till it's time to stuff the bird. Birds. I'm gonna go ahead. Start preparing some of the vegetables. 
that I'll be uh, adding to the dish. So we got fancy carrots. And what I do is I add these, the vegetables at the bottom, so that uh, the uh, hens, the corner hens, have something to lay on. I got some uh, uh, baby golds, potatoes. And I'll just quarter these, or half them, depending on the size. That's plenty of potatoes. Could do a onion, sweet onion. I believe that's a sweet yellow, or maybe a sweet white. Just give them a really rough chop. That does it for the onions. Next is the celery. does it for the celery. Next is the corn. Corn on the cob. Now you can eat corn on a cob raw. You don't have to cook it. 
that does it for the corn on the cob. Now, this garlic, see this garlic? This garlic is from Boo Daniels, straight out of his garden. Well, he, he, he had it hung, but it was out of his garden. So, I'm using a, a, a whole, whole, whole clothes here, the whole thing. I mean, I'll chop it up. And all you do is slice these really small and they'll just melt right in there. It's all it took. And that's it. Let me show you what we got here. So we got corn on the cob, golden potatoes, celery, carrots, we had the garlic, and the onions. Here's the garlic carrots, celery, potatoes, onions, corn on the cob.
Well, it's time to get the uh, Dutch oven oiled up. So, this is just uh, vegetable oil. So, put a little bit of vegetable oil in there. Enough to coat the bottom, coat the sides, and coat the lid. So here's the lid. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab some of this oil here. And the reason why you want to coat the lid is it makes for easier cleaning. And it helps keep the seasoning Yeah, I finally got one of the, the uh, brushes, so, which makes it a lot easier. Now you don't need a lot. Just got to make sure you get good good amount of coverage so that... Uh, Keep the season built up and it just makes it so much easier to clean. So here's the lid. So you got the lid well oiled. Then you spread the oil out inside your Dutch oven. Now you can use the spray oils, but you're better off, this is just more oil, but in a different container. You're better off using liquid oil instead of the spray oil. And just like the lid, you want to get the bottom covered, you want to get the sides all covered. Make sure you Get it, get it all covered in oil. All the way up the sides. It's just like I said, helps with the seasoning, keeps it seasoned, keeps the Dutch oven nice so that it's easy cleaning. You do this, your Dutch oven will last forever. You can pass it down to your kids, grandkids. You may need this later, so I'm going to go ahead and put it on a plate. Just put it somewhere. Okay, so you got your oil covering your Dutch oven and your lid. Now it's time to put the 
cook the bottom with the vegetables. And there's no order really. All you, all you need the vegetables for, well, you're going to be eating the vegetables, but then uh, you will be. Uh, Eating them, they're there to prop up the uh, the chicken. I mean the Cornish hens. Now uh, the corn put to the side. Could you put those on after you put the Cornish hens inside there? So try to keep everything at the same level. So. I'll put the potatoes on in a minute. I gotta break up those onions, make sure they get spread around. All right, onions are all spread around. Now the potatoes are going to get spread around. All right. Now I'll bring the camera over to show you real quickly. So there it is. You got your celery, your carrots, your onions, your potatoes, your garlic, and the corn will go in in between your your Cornish hens. So I'll grab the corner shines. Get those ready. Now your corner signs. Make sure you give them a good rinsing. <laughs>
right, so you got your two Cornish hands. So you take your stuffing, let me do this over, put your stuffing inside your bird. And you don't season, well you could, it's up to you, your uh, the inside cavity, but uh, I don't, since I'm stuffing the uh, bird with stuffing, and stuffing is already seasoned. But you can't you can if you want. And you want to try to get as much stuffing in there as you can because the stuffing will keep the Cornish hens very moist and adds a lot of flavor, believe it or not. Always want to keep washing your hands when you're handling corner fence, any type of bird. So you just fill the inside cavity all the way up. Then you want to lay your corner hen so that the back is facing down. You do the same to the other one. You just keep filling it as, oh, as much as possible with the stuffing. Basically, it'll take most of uh, the stuffing you made out of that box between the two birds. And you want to keep the corner hands, you don't want them to really touch. Try not to have them touch. Depends on the size of uh, your cast iron kettle. Next thing you do, then you can go ahead and use your spray oil spray your birds, spray your vegetables, seasoning Got adobo. And black pepper.
and Mrs. Dash. So I don't know if you guys use Mrs. Dash, but I like Mrs. Dash. And that's it. So you put uh, mission stash, salt, and pepper. I mean uh, adobo, black pepper, and Mrs. Dash. And then you go ahead and lay your corn on the cob. And there. Wherever you can find some room. And then what you do. You will need just a little bit of water, not much. You could use whatever, you know, like stock. Now you'll get most of your moisture from the chickens and the water from the vegetables. That's all it took. Now I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like. There you go. Two corner shines. Oops. Camera got off. Tilt her here. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead, put the lid on. up my area here a little bit. So now while this sets I'm gonna go ahead and get the cold briquettes uh, all set up. So so the cold briquettes so the cold briquettes is catching and so since we're going more uh, for a roasting and less of a braising we want twice as many coals on the lid as we do on the bottom so I don't know how many's in here so I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, probably, I don't know, 10 at the bottom. So I got about 10 on the bottom. So I went ahead set the uh, Dutch oven on the coals then the rest of them I'll just throw on top like I said you want to have 
twice as many coals on the top than you have on the bottom. Now it's only 35 degrees today, so I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. I got 25, so I got more on top. I got twi more than twice as many coals on top than I do on the bottom. So hopefully uh, they'll do it. It's gonna take to get this done, it's going to take about an hour and 15 minutes. And so hopefully those uh, briquettes caught and uh, we're going to lose some heat at the bottom because it's a little damp, but uh, we should be okay. I'll come back, uh, check it at about 45 minutes just to make sure everything's good and uh, whether or not we need to add uh, more briquettes. So. Gotta straighten out my steam basket. There we go. Alright, we're just gonna give it a quick look. To make sure it's uh should be done oh yeah you probably can't see it but it's done so I'm gonna go ahead off camera because I need both hands uh, to move this around. So, so I brought the uh, Cornish hens inside, and uh, th they look really good. And so, I'm gonna go ahead and plate this up, give it a try. Well, the Cornish hens are done, and so give it a try here. So the first thing I'm going to try is a potato. Yeah, the potato is really good. Try a carrot. Mmm, nice and tender. Celery. Mmm, not mushy. Still a little firm. The onions. Mm. Try the stuffing. Wow, <laughs> that stuffing is amazing. Ooh, orange tends a little hot. Oh, it just pulls pulls apart like it's supposed to. So let's see what it takes. Ow. That's a little hot. We'll try the little drumstick. Mmm. Very good. Very good. Try a little bit of corn. Mmm. Everything's really good. Mm. Oh man, this dish is delicious. The only thing it could use is some dinner rolls. So today, the Unpaved Explorer shows you how to cook 
Cornish hens, corn, carrots, potatoes, celery, and onions, and it being stuffed in a cast iron Dutch oven. And so, well, I'm going to sit here, eat my dinner, drink my iced tea, and uh, catch you on the next one. Again, my name's John Coffey. I'm the Unpaved Explorer, and I'm out of here. You take care, and I'll catch you on the next exploration. Bye now, and stay safe and healthy.